Hello, everyone. Welcome to worship today. It is great to uh, have you all join us for worship, whether you are a first time visitor or whether you have uh, been coming to Wood Lake for many, many years. We are very, very grateful that you are joining us today. Uh, as we begin our service today, we have a few announcements as always. Uh, first off, uh, we will have a confirmation parents meeting uh, via Zoom on September 9th. I'll be sending the link out to that, hopefully in the next week, week or two here. Um, a couple of fun announcements. It, it looks like we'll be uh, participating with House of Prayer and collaborating doing confirmation ministry together this year. So we're very excited about that. We think that's going to be a great opportunity for our kids and uh, to, to get to know just a wider array of other youth in our area. And we're excited about uh, the potential of uh, collaborating for youth ministry together. So we're looking forward to that September 9th. And then our first uh, confirmation meeting will be on September 16th. And again, we'll get uh, information out to you in the next few weeks about that. Um, upcoming shortly here for youth, uh, Wednesday the 19th, uh, we are going to have a couple of fun events. We'll have uh, just a fun family time in the park. It's going to be a pretty low key event, but we encourage everyone to come, bring a lawn chair, and just visit with the people, get to know uh, other youth and families from Woodlake. We're really excited about that. So that'll be at five o'clock at Donaldson Park. And then later that evening, starting at 7.30 at Wood Lake in the lawn, we are going to do movie on the lawn uh, for all youth and people who are interested in coming. Uh, for the sake of just social distancing and getting a sense of how many people will be there, we would ask that, um, A, you bring your own food and beverage so we won't be, you know, doing popcorn or anything like that because we don't want to, to be spreading germs. So bring your own food and, and beverage. And also, if you could, just let me know that you're coming. Um, you can email me at ncannon at woodlakechurch.org. And uh, then I'll get your name on a list and we will uh, start setting things up. So hope you can come uh, August 19th, uh, movie, movie, uh, outdoor movie at the church. Let's pray for good weather. A couple of other exciting things. We did our first drive-in, first ever drive-in worship service at Wood Lake this past Sunday. And we are doing our next one on August 30th. Now, one of the things we really value is your feedback. Uh, so if you can uh, take the time, if you were there, to fill out the survey that was printed uh, in your bulletin, if you can fill that out. Um, and uh, I think the I should say the link address, the, the, the web address was printed in your bulletin. Uh, if you can take the time to fill that out, we're going to be using that info to improve our future drive-in services. So thank you very much for your time and effort on that. Um, uh, so a couple of other fun things that are happening. We just wanted to highlight that you might see uh, Christy Olson, who is one of our young adults here at church. She has been doing, actually interning with us this summer and just doing an amazing job. She's got a number of projects uh, that she's got going on. She's uh, been cleaning up the Sunday school supply room. She's working on a day of service for young adults at Woodlake Lutheran Church. Um, and also she is going to be putting together our godly play room for the fall. Godly Play is going to be our, our Sunday morning children's ministry, and uh, we're going to be figuring out exactly how all that's going to work uh, with COVID in the coming weeks here. But I uh, wanted to just kind of get that on uh, your radar, that if you see Christy Olson, pat her on the back, tell her she's doing a great job, because she is. Uh, a couple of other things. We, as a church, always have a lot of need for volunteers. So if you are finding yourself just bored and stir-crazy, with all this COVID-19 stuff, and you're like, I just need to get out of the house, then there's a couple opportunities for you. Number one, uh, we need some folks to serve on the audit committee uh, at church. So if you are someone who's good with money and finances, and uh, or even just someone who's willing to kind of give their time and effort and to learn a little bit about the process, um, we encourage you to get in touch with the church um, and email, the, email our uh, church office and sign up for that. That's office at woodlakechurch.org. Um, and then there's also a lot of building needs right now. So I'm going to go through some of these leads that our uh, building commissioner, Ed Morrow, put together for us, just so you get a sense of the kind of needs that we have. Would also like to add that there's a school supply drive going on right now for Veep. Uh, they need backpacks and scientific cal uh, calculators and a number of other things. 
So if you are able to contribute, um, you can bring those things to church. Uh, there's other uh, items that you can bring. You can check out your announcements uh, in your email for that as well. With that said, let us begin with a word of prayer as we uh, begin our worship service today. Holy God, you are powerful and mighty, but you come to us in the form of Jesus, ready to listen, to be in community with all the people of earth. God, we're grateful for your presence in our lives, for the ways that you join us in worship and in communion and in song and prayer. And God, we pray that you would lift us up and worship this day so that we may go out into the world and do your work in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to intone Psalm 67 with me. Do, 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 do. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Today we are going to practice an individual confession and forgiveness. Because although we are set free to live in love and faithfulness, we continue to turn away from God and to live from one another. Confessing sin involves continuing to return to our baptism, where we confess that our sinfulness is drowned and dies. In the gift of forgiveness, God raises us up again and gives us new life in his Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. You have come to make confession before God. At this time, we confess our sins. Please confess them where you are. Confess them to yourself and to God. And before me as a pastor of Woodlake Lutheran Church, sins of which you are aware and which trouble you at this time. If you cannot think of any sins that trouble you, please recite these following words. Cling to the promise and the word of forgiveness that God gives us and that I speak to you from God. Children of God, in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you and all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep you Keep your heart and your mind in Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. 
Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, the 56th chapter, starting with the first verse and then moving from verse six to eight. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in the house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather them I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. 
He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hey, everybody, I'm Pastor Neil. I'm Noah. And today we are trying something new, aren't we, Noah? Noah, what's the new thing that we're going to do that, we, that you have never done before? Camping. That's right. We're going camping for the first time. Noah, what do you think about trying new things? Great. Yeah, you really like trying new things. No, come here for a second. Come here. What, what about trying new things do you think is great? Uh, the Why don't you look at the camera so people can see you? Uh, so like try like figuring out how they are, and also when I have tried something and not like it, I I can also try again and maybe like it. That's right. That's right. When you try things again, sometimes you like it. Maybe even if you didn't like it originally, you know. Sometimes we get an idea about something. Like some people might think, mm, I don't like camping very much. And guess who didn't like camping very much as a kid? I didn't, but then I started to learn a little bit more about camping, and I went camping a couple times, and you know what? Guess how much I like camping now? 100%. 100%. I love camping. That's right, and just like that, you know, Jesus sometimes likes it when we try new things, or when we kind of listen to new people, or hear new voices, and when we're willing to change our mind, I think usually that's a pretty good thing for God, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, all right. So let's say a prayer, and then uh, then we'll go on with the rest of our service, okay? Sure. Okay, let's pray. Do you want to repeat after me? I'll be like... Okay, just me. I'm going to like, yeah. You can tell me the verses, and then I'll say them first, and then you'll repeat. Okay, sounds good. You, you say them first, and then I repeat. I don't know the word. First. Oh, say, dear God. Dear God. Thanks for, tr thanks for helping us try new things. Thanks for helping us try new things. Thanks for helping us love new people. Thanks for helping us love new people. Amen. Amen. All right, good to see you, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Gonna see you soon. Sisters and brothers, grace and peace to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. She was a Canaanite. Now that doesn't mean very much to us today, but it meant a lot back then. When the ancient Israelites were enslaved in Egypt, they were promised this certain bit of land, what we now call the Middle East. Now this was the land of the Canaanites. The natives there were from a number of different tribes and nationalities, so there wasn't exactly one culture. But we know that they were polytheists, meaning they worshipped many gods, specifically the god Baal, which put them at odds with the Israelites. Now, the story of the Bible is filled with references to the Canaanites. Usually the story goes that the Jewish people start worshipping the Canaanite gods, Baal specifically, and the Jewish God, our God, punishes the Jewish people for falling away from the one true God. This caused the Jewish authorities at the time to become very rigid and closed off towards outsiders because they saw the Canaanites and other outsiders as a threat to their own sanctity, like a, a barrier between them and God. Now it's hard to put this in too strong a language. The Israelites, at least the religious leaders, but probably a good number of the Jewish people, despised the Canaanites. So right off the bat in our gospel lesson today, there is a conflict. A Canaanite woman approaches Jesus and his disciples, and she is distraught. She says her daughter has a demon. Now today, of course, there's a lot of different ways that we could interpret this. She could be having seizures. She could have mental illness. She could have any number of diseases or disorders. 
Jesus and his disciples had been taught, perhaps all their lives, to keep away from these kinds of people, lest their own purity become defiled. So when she approaches them, they just ignore her. And I want to lift up here that it says that Jesus specifically ignores her. But she keeps going anyway. She persists. And the disciples say to her, tell her to go away. But she keeps coming. She comes right up to Jesus, kneels at his feet and begs, Lord, help me. But Jesus dismisses her again, this time with the strongest language yet. He says, it's not right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Now, as I talked about this earlier, there is some context to this statement. The Jews are leery at best of the Canaanites because they don't want to offend God. And Jesus is, after all, a Jew. But even still, these seem like really cruel words from our Savior to a woman who is desperate to heal her daughter. But even still, even in despite of these words, she persists. She says, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus, apparently blown away by this, says, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Now, this is a hard story for us to understand because this is not a Jesus that we're used to. We're used to Jesus being kind. We're used to Jesus being a shepherd. But most of all, we're used to Jesus giving us a lesson. But this appears to be the story of Jesus learning a lesson. And that is an idea that I think has offended people over time. And we'll talk about that. But first, I want to talk about the Canaanite woman, because there is something to be learned there. From the Canaanite woman, what we learn is that persistence in faith, but not just in faith, in life also, matters. That she continued to approach Jesus and didn't back down or back off, even in the face of harsh treatment, matters. And Jesus is moved by this. He says, how great is your faith? And remember, the disciples just want to walk away from her, right? There is no reason for them to engage this person. She's poor. She's from the wrong religion. She's a woman, which all those things in her day were marks against her. But her persistence moved Jesus to a new and better course. Do you remember a few years ago when Elizabeth Warren rose to the spotlight when in objection uh, to the confirmation of Jeff Sessions, she was silenced from reading a letter from Coretta Scott King. And then following the Senate ruling to silence uh, Senator Warren, Senator McConnell said on the floor, Senator Warren was giving a lengthy speech. She had appeared to violate the rule. She was warned. She was given an explanation. Nevertheless, she persisted. Now this phrase became a rallying cry, not just for Elizabeth Warren, but for women who have been silenced for generations. In that same year, the Me Too movement came about, calling about men in power who have sexually assaulted women without consequence for years. But for the first time in many women's lifetimes, some men like Harvey Weinstein and others were held accountable for their actions. This world is stubborn for change. For years, our culture dismissed the cries of women being assaulted. If not for the persistence and a movement of women across the country, justice would have never come. Similarly, the cries of black and brown voices across this country have been ignored for decades. 
by people in power. But recently, thanks to the persistence of many, there has been a shift, not a whole system change, but a shift in power and understanding thanks to those who continue to cry for justice for the likes of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and the countless other victims of racism and injustice, specifically aimed at the black community. Their persistence over time has moved the hearts and minds of the entrenched. And what we learn from Nevertheless She Persisted, from Me Too, from Black Lives Matter, and from the Canaanite woman, is that change of heart, our change of heart, can come through persistence. Justice comes through continued effort. Now back to Jesus. We have a difficult time with this story. I have a difficult time with this story because Jesus is God. And we often make different assumptions about Jesus' side of the story because we, we assume that because Jesus is God, he already knows everything that there is to know. We assume that because Jesus is God, Jesus is immovable. We assume that because Jesus is God, that he's always the teacher and the giver and that he doesn't have a, a need to learn or to listen. But I wonder if there's another way to look at this story. Right? If we believe that Jesus is God, but we throw about, we throw out those assumptions that we make about what makes God holy, then I think we might learn something more from this story. For example, maybe Jesus does actually learn in this story. If that's the case, then maybe it's actually holy for us to learn something new. Right? Maybe it's actually righteous to change your mind when confronted with someone else's humanity. Maybe it's blessed to listen to someone else. Think about it. In this particular scenario, Jesus is essentially an authority and power. He held this sort of moral upper hand, this moral religious upper hand. He held the upper hand in regards to his own power and that he could choose to use it or choose not to. And he does. He uses his power ultimately to be, to help this woman. Now, how often do people in power choose not to be moved? How often do people, how often are people in power indifferent to the problems of others? How often do people in power listen only to themselves? We often think that true holiness is the power to be unmoved. But what if in this moment, God is showing us that holiness means to learn something new, that righteousness is to be moved by the plight of others, that listening to someone else's pleas and cries is a blessed act. Today's story is about power. And to understand this story, we have to understand what side of the story we're on. Power can come in many forms, religion, wealth, skin color, sexual orientation. And in our power, it's easy to become entrenched in our position. Canaanites are bad because they turn the Israelites to other gods. Poor people brought it on themselves if only they had worked harder. People of color or people who are different from me are inferior for reasons X, Y, and Z. But hearing the other, being moved off of our own entrenched positions in the face of someone else's truth, in the face of overwhelming evidence, is a holy act. Holiness is not about being unmoved and stagnant in our thoughts and in our positions. Holiness is found in movement and growth and openness and community. There will be times in our lives when we find ourselves in a position of powerlessness. In those times, remember the Canaanite woman's persistent, persistence and be persistent yourself. Speak up again and again 
and again for truth because that's the only thing that will cause change and the world needs truth and the world needs change but there will also and i think often in our lives be times when we find ourselves in positions of power and when you do when we do let's not push the canaanite woman away take a moment hear her truth and don't be afraid to be changed by it amen Please join us around Richfield as we continue worship with the prayers of the people. After each prayer petition, you will hear the words, Lord, in your mercy. Please respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessings in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage. Renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon all. Lord, in your mercy. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities, and town, for those who need your healing, especially those who submitted prayer requests this week. Be with Eileen Berge, Julie Page, Lois Erickson, the family of Greg and Jackie Lesky, the family of Joe and Jody, the family of Barb Varthine, and the family of Linda Ludkin. Lord, in your mercy. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant Woodlake Lutheran Church grace to find our life refreshed in you. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy.
Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, especially those who have died this past year, join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. In the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Joining with the people of God throughout the ages, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. With Lake Lutheran Church, we continue with our passing of the peace as we share Christ's peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Wood Lake Lutheran Church, at this time we continue our worship service with offering. A big thank you to all who have helped Wood Lake stand strong during this uncertain time of the Corona-19 virus. We rely on your donations and generosity to help us continue our ministry in Richfield and hope you can make a financial gift to Wood Lake either online at our website at woodlakechurch.org O-R-G and click on the Give tab, or mail in your donation to Woodlake Lutheran Church at 2120 West 76th Street, Richfield, Minnesota 55423. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity.
Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Church, may you go in peace, for Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.